Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The seven-year marriage of a binational gay couple in San Francisco is at risk of being torn apart. The Obama administration has denied the same-sex couple the same immigration benefits routinely given to opposite-sex couples. The decision is based on the so-called Defense of Marriage Act, the 1996 law known as DOMA, which denies federal benefits to same-sex couples. Bradford Wells is a U.S. citizen. Anthony John Mack is Australian. They've lived together for 19 years and were among the first same-sex couples to legally marry in Massachusetts. Anthony's also the primary caretaker for his husband, who has HIV-AIDS. Earlier this year, the Obama administration said they would no longer defend DOMA in the courts, but it's still on the books. Speaking before the Senate Judiciary Committee last month, human rights campaign President Joe Salmanis urged lawmakers to back DOMA's repeal. DOMA means that the many protections the federal government provides for the health and security of American families remains out of reach for same-sex couples and their children. It keeps, for instance, gay and lesbian Americans from sponsoring their spouses for immigration to the United States, forcing binational couples to choose between love and country. With DOMA still in effect, Mack and Wells' nearly two-decade-long relationship now risks coming to an end. U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services has ordered Mack to leave the country by August 25th. Well, Bradford Wells and Anthony John Mack are joining us now from San Francisco. And here in New York, we're joined by Rachel Tiven, executive director of Immigration Equality, the organization fighting for equality under U.S. immigration law for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and HIV positive individuals. We welcome you all to Democracy Now! Uh, let's go first to San Francisco. Bradford and Anthony, welcome. Um, Bradford, why don't you start off by talking about when you got married and what you're facing today? We got married on July 22nd, 2004. It was really um, the most momentous day of my life. I'd never imagined that I'd be able to get married. And uh, when the opportunity came to me, I realized that I was with the man I'd looked for my whole life. Um, I'd never felt anybody, anything towards someone the way I felt about, about Anthony. And um, I didn't think about us being torn apart in the future. We had been able to keep within the law and get the proper visas and, and being together, although it was a lot of work, it was possible. It, it was only uh, at the end of last year that, that we ran out of options. Well, now we find ourselves in this position. So talk exactly about what has happened over the years. Um, you got married. And what would happen with the opposite-sex couple that come where one of the uh, uh, members, one of the couple is not American? How does it work for them? Well, yeah, um, if, if, if we were uh, an opposite heterosexual couple, um, we would have actually been apply, able to apply for fiancé visas or uh, done something many years ago, even probably before we could have married, um, because the opportunity is there even, uh, for, uh, even before marriage for same-sex, for opposite-sex couples, you know, for heterosexual couples. So uh, we've been living uh, the, the visa shuffle and, and planning uh, for, for many years, we've had to work very hard just to stay together. Mm. Rachel Tippin, talk about this issue, uh, what this means, where gay couples who are binational stand in the United States. President Obama has said they will not defend DOMA, the Defense of Marriage Act, um, in courts, but of course it's still on the books. It's still in the books, but the government has the power to keep families like Bradford and Anthony together. They have the ability to take green card applications for married couples and just put them aside. What we are asking, what we are recommending the government do is, when a law that bars this family from the recognition for which they are completely qualified is unconstitutional, which is the case here, that instead of denying an application, which is what happened to Bradford and Anthony, they should just put it aside while DOMA is being litigated. 
At a daily White House briefing in February, Press Secretary Jay Carney reiterated the administration will no longer defend the Defense of Marriage Act. The president's position on the Defense of Marriage Act has been uh, consistent. He has long opposed it as uh, unnecessary and unfair. The attorney general uh, recommended that the uh, higher level of scrutiny uh, be applied, and under that higher le level of scrutiny, deemed or recommended that it be viewed as unconstitutional. The president reviewed that recommendation and concurred. Uh, therefore, again, because of the uh, court-imposed deadline and the necessity that this decision be made, uh, our announcement was made. Press Secretary Jay Carney then went on to say President Obama must still enforce DOMA. It is also important to note that the enforcement of the Defense of Marriage Act continues. The president is constitutionally bound to enforce the laws, and uh, enforcement of the uh, DOMA will continue. That was Jay Carney, White House spokesman, speaking in February. Rachel Tiven, um, talk more about what this means and what uh, President Obama could do. Sure. Well, arguably, what, 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 what should happen is couples that they should get a green card. But the administration has taken the position that granting them the green card for which they are legally qualified as a married couple that has been together 19 years can demonstrate how committed they are to one another and how bona fide and, and committed their relationship is, they should be entitled to the benefit. But if the administration takes the position that giving them a green card would be a violation of, of DOMA and it has to continue to enforce this unconstitutional law, then what they should do is wait. They should put the application aside and not separate this family, because this is a family that is facing an extreme deadline. Well, let's talk about this deadline right now. Let's talk about, Anthony, when you expect to be deported to Australia, and also what this means for the two of you. What have you been told, Anthony? I've, I've been told that I should I, I, I have to uh, leave the country by the 25th of August. Um, and uh, at this stage, I have I have no plans. I'm I'm where we have avenues of appeal that uh, the the lawyers at Immigration Equality are, are, are looking at, and so we, we would like to to explore those obviously uh, those av avenues and um, and hopefully the, they will put my application aside until the decision about DOMA has been made and. Uh, and uh, so I can stay here under a, a legal, lawful status. And this has been very important to us. Uh, so when the time comes and DOMA is repealed, that it will make it easy for me to, to actually apply and to become a resident or citizen. That, that is one of the things that we're looking at right now. Uh, we, are, we are looking at <coughs> uh, filing an appeal and a motion to reconsider on, on our applications. Um, we, we know that if things just continue to go like they're going, though, that appeal will, will be rejected. But DOMA has a very big constitutional question right now. The president himself said he believes it is unconstitutional. When, when DOMA has gone to court, it has been declared unconstitutional. What, what I want, what I'm asking President Obama and Secretary uh, Napolitano is to give me the benefit of the constitutional doubt. If, if DOMA withholds benefits from federal employees, those benefits can always be given to those employees when, when DOMA is settled. But if, if, my, if my marriage is destroyed because of DOMA, I can't get that back when DOMA is finally considered unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. I'm asking the president to please hold our appeal, if we file one, um, in abeyance until the DOMA issue is settled. Bradford, um, Anthony is not only your husband, but he's also your primary caretaker. Um, talk about what that means for you, what it means for you and in, um, in your health. He's also the man I looked for my whole life. I, I've, I've never found anyone that, that, that I feel such a, a comfortable fit with as Anthony. Um, he does help me out quite a bit. I have good days, I have bad days. Um, something that, that, I, that I was remembering last night is there have been several times when I've left the house and um, I haven't been able to get back home. Uh, I have um, pretty bad arthritis in my hips. And 
I found myself maybe a block away, half a block away, and unable to, to um, make it home. I, I've have, had to sit down on the sidewalk. And, and I've called Anthony, and, and he's got in the car and come over and, and picked me up and brought me home. And if Anthony wasn't here, there'd be no one else to do that. I'd probably end up calling city services, having an ambulance or the fire department come. And um, they're not going to take me home. They'd take me to the hospital. And that would end up costing the American public a lot of money eventually. Um, so I, I think that it is really in, in the interest of uh, of the country that I have someone who's willing to provide the care and support I need, who isn't looking for a paycheck for it, but but doing it out of love. Rachel, are there any other considerations the government can make um, related to, well, the issue of Anthony being a primary caretaker, aside from the fact that they are a married couple? Unfortunately, the, the total non-recognition of their relationship under American immigration law is a huge impediment. And this is, you know, this is a family that, that you know, as they express so beautifully, have played by the rules, have been completely within valid status for all of the time that, that they have been a family in this country. And, the, you know, their, their options at this point are very few. But that shouldn't be, because they are a married couple, an American citizen who wants to keep his family together here is being discriminated against. And the administration has the power to stop that. They have the power to give this family the opportunity to stay together, to keep this family together. Um, the issue of marriage was one of a number of topics discussed at last night's Republican debate in Iowa. I want to play a sampling of the candidates' responses, beginning with former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney. Marriage is a status. It's not an activity that goes on within the walls of a state. And as a result, our marriage status relationship should be constant across the country. I believe we should have a federal amendment of the Constitution that defines marriage as a relationship between a man and a woman. Because I believe the ideal place to raise a child is in a home with a mom and a dad. All right. Thank you, Governor. Next, we'll go to Governor Huntsman. I believe in traditional marriage, first and foremost. I've been married 28 years. I have seven terrific kids to show for it. But I also believe in civil unions, because I think this nation can do a better job when it comes to equality. And I think this nation can do a better job when it comes to reciprocal beneficiary rights. And I believe that this is something that ought to be discussed among the various states. I don't have any problem with states having this discussion. But as for me, I support civil unions. Congresswoman Bachman, quickly. Thank you. I support the federal marriage amendment because I believe that we will see this issue at the Supreme Court someday. And as president, I will not nominate activist judges who legislate from the bench. I also want to say when I was in Minnesota, I was the chief author of the constitutional amendment to define marriage as one man, one woman. I have an absolutely unblemished record when it comes to this issue of man, one, man woman marriage. That was Republican Congressmember Michelle Bachman at last night's debate. Before her was former Utah Governor John Huntsman and Mitt Romney. Uh, Rachel Tibbin, your response? Well, it, it, I mean, it's just sad, because the American public is speaking very clearly on this, and there is a majority of support for equal marriage rights. And, of course, people who believe that states should have the ability to make their own choices about family law matters and other important states' rights issues, you would think would be consistent about states' ability to make those choices. But what really matters is for the federal government to treat every family equally. And we are closer and closer to the time when families will be treated equally by the federal government. The Defense of Marriage Act is not long for this world. And in the meanwhile, there is precedent for the government to provide relief for families like Bradford and Anthony. They've done it in the past. They've done it in a circumstance where there was litigation pending and, and legislation pending and litigation about the status of widows whose husbands had died while their green card applications were pending. And the government decided that rather than deport all of those widows, they would allow them to have their applications placed on hold while the issue was negotiated. Now, surely a, a living, beloved spouse like Anthony is to Bradford is worth at least as much to this government as a spouse that has already passed away.